Hey everyone, this video is going to talk briefly about the angle bisector of a triangle and how we construct one. So before we do that, we want to look first at what an angle bisector officially is. Um, and we've been talking about this a lot in this course so far. But just to recap, again, for every angle that you have, have ever created, there's always going to exist a line that divides the angle into, and here's the key word, two equal parts. So this two equal parts is going to be known as the angle bisector. And in a triangle, since there's three sides, there's going to be three angles and thus three angle bisectors. So if we go back to our triangle that we've been working with here, and we'll take a look at this guy, we're going to need a protractor in order to do this successfully. So if I take my protractor out here, remember that you always want to read from one ray to the other. So if I have this on, let's get it on so you can see it clearly. I have the vertex of the triangle marked right there at the center. I have my angle zero starting right there, which means I'm going to read from zero up. So I'm going to use the outside set of numbers. As you can see, this is, ends up being a 50 degree angle. The angle bisector, remember, cuts it into two equal parts. So if my angle is 50, my angle bisector is going to cut it into two 25 degree angles. So at the 25 degree mark, I'm going to put a little bit of a dash there. And now I'm going to take my straight edge, and that can be a ruler or it could be your protractor, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to connect this to create my segment. So I'm going to start at the vertex, and let's pivot this so that it's going to line up with that mark that I've done. This right here, let's fix that here a little bit. This line that is on the screen here is on my angle bisector. And again, to check it, you can always take your protractor back out and say, all right, it says 25 degrees. Yes, you can even tilt it if you want to try it again to say, all right, is this one 25 degrees? And the answer looks to be just about yes, if I can get it lined up correctly. Okay, so that's how we create an angle bisector. What I've done here now is I've drawn in the other two angle bisectors. And like as we're beginning to see with all of these, this creates a point of concurrency. All three angle bisectors seem to meet at this central point right here. So we're going to give this central point a name, and this is going to be called the in-center. So this point of concurrency, this special point where three or more lines meet, uh, is going to be called the in-center. And so the in-center of a triangle, very simply, is the angle bisectors will intersect at a point. And this part right here, we're going to go back to our drawing and take a look at but it's actually going to be equidistant from the sides of the triangle. So when you bisect an angle, it's going to be equidistant from the sides. And again, going back to what I said on the previous screen, we're going to call that point the in-center. And going back to the drawing, let's take a look and see about this particular, I guess we'll call it a theorem, something that we would be able to prove. But let's just prove it just by looking at the drawing, okay? So in order to visualize that, what it's saying here is, if I'm at this center point right here, the in-center, let me maximize this back, this in-center, think of this almost as a triangular field. And if you're in the middle of that field right now, and I tell you right now that you have to run to the nearest road, well, first off, when you run towards something, so if you're trying to run, let's say, to this road on the left-hand side, when you run towards it, you're not going to run kind of at a diagonal. You're not going to zigzag. You're going to go straight at it. And when I mean by straight at it, I'm referring to you're going to go perpendicular to that road. That's the quickest route to the road. And so when I take my ruler here, and I'm going to use the straight edge of my ruler to show that it's perpendicular, I'm going to kind of just run this up. And let's actually use centimeters. I'm going to run this up on the side here and see that it's about, and again, a little less than five centimeters. Okay? Likewise, when I turn it this way, let's take a look, another run here, and you guys can't see it, so let's move that up a little bit. And it looks to be, again, just short of 5 centimeters. And the same thing will go for the third side. So this, once again, another way to check the accuracy of your angle bisectors. And as always, make sure that you're drawing these in pencil first before you draw them in in marker or color pencil, just so that you're able to erase any errors that you make. Thank you for watching.